Today I'll be exploring some of the differences between an off-the-shelf recycled and DIY battery, why one might choose one over the other um, while putting together this 48 volt lithium iron phosphate. Stick around. How better to start off a build than to drill your hole in the wrong place? So you'll see here where I'm measuring a 16th of an inch off the side of this board. This is an end cap for the batteries, for the cells that create the batteries. And in the time lapse later, you'll see where I'm struggling to get everything to fit because these holes are just too close together. And in the end, I had to enlarge the holes, which all worked out fine. But doing this again, and I thought I had the measurements correct, I've done this a few times, I would just run those washers to the edge of the wood. These are one and a quarter inch fender washers with a 5 16th hole. And if there was extra space uh, between the, the row columns of cells, then I would just use extra spacers from that plastic that I used to separate the cells and no harm, no foul. A lot easier than trying to put together a battery when the holes are too close together. So onto the actual premise of this video, DIY or buy, while we watch me build a battery here. My journey with batteries kind of started, um, if you go back and look at the very beginning videos of this channel, with a recycled battery. I bought a, uh, 8S, a pair of 8S lithium ion, not lithium iron phosphate batteries from Battery Hookup back a couple years ago and figured out how to get a BMS on them and, and you know, got them solar charging and whatnot. And the reason that I decided to, to do that was I had ended up with these solar panels that I was trying to install in my house and I was also reselling them locally and I had a lot of people like hey what about you know what about batteries and you know let's let's do some off-grid systems you know can we can, you know can we do lithium you know or or is or is lead acid better and I knew from my experience that lead acid just it was more of an art than a science to me uh, because of how quickly they die. And I think that's, <laughs> I think it's actually science, you know, they just don't last that long. And so my whole journey into solar storage started with lithium. Uh, yeah, I think I had a single lead acid system and, and there's, there's a video or two about that, but those golf cart batteries, uh, you know, I killed them due to my negligence and inexperience. So, uh, so it started my journey. DIY or buy, definitely DIY. And and a big part of that was the cost. I think I was able to buy uh, 400 bucks worth of lithium and it was like three and a half kilowatt hours actual. Um, and two years ago, like that was, that was amazing, you know, to be able to go from a Battleborn that's 1.28 kilowatt hours and instead I got three and a half kilowatt hours for half the price of the Battleborn. I was like, I was excited static um so fast forward from there i'm then you know delving into these these batteries and, and building and diy and and eventually come across well lithium iron phosphate prismatic cells so i started getting onto alibaba because you can't there's not a lot of u.s suppliers for prismatic cells of lithium iron phosphate um, so I got on Alibaba and found a reseller there and started, you know, buying a battery here, a battery being, you know, like four cells, building a little, little 12 volt battery. And then, you know, I bought a couple more and built a couple more and then ended up wording like a hundred cells and those ended up being, uh, not so great. Those were definitely great B cells. Um, so learned a lesson there. Uh, but since then, you know, found a good supplier and I've bought hundreds and hundreds of cells and put together a lot of batteries. And it's just, it's, it's become one of those things where over time gotten a little better at, you know, how to put them together and the, the speed of putting them together and it makes a lot of sense. So for me, uh, I've, I've definitely gone into the DIY. Now, I, I, I kind of have this little solar store where we sell solar panels and batteries and inverter chargers and charge controllers and wire. And I, I, I digress the, the whole DIY versus buy, right? That's, that's what we're talking about here. And I personally 
really like doing recycled batteries. Jehu Garcia was one of the first people that I started watching in this space. And I love that he, you know, grabs these, these old used scooter batteries and uh, builds for his customers, for his viewer base, um, ways to utilize these recycled batteries or recycled cells or what have you. And to me, that's, that's the ultimate form of recycling is to take something and put it to another use instead of breaking it down to its chemical parts because the batteries still have some life left in them. Let's, let's use them up before we pull the lithium back out and build another battery. This plastic that I'm using as separators can be bought at Home Depot, or at least I bought it at Home Depot as like shelf liner type of stuff. And it's kind of, it's just a thick plastic, cuts really easy on a table saw, and it gives me electrical insulation between all thread and the cells, and then also that, that section where the, the cells are running um, in parallel. I did use fish paper and double stick tape between each of the cells to keep them from shifting around as well. While the blue shrink wrap on each of the cells does provide electrical insulation, I like to provide an extra layer because it could be rubbed through. It doesn't reach. <clears throat> That's fine, I'll just cut a new slot. It probably looks like here that I am butting the heat sink of this BMS up against the wood and maybe that seems like a bad idea. And while I have done that and they've performed just fine, what I did here though is I put a washer behind the BMS, between the BMS and the wood. That way there is a tiny bit of space behind that BMS for air to flow. Um, these BMSs are very nice, so it's rated for 100 amps, and it can actually handle 100 amps continuous um, without burning up. So I'm not concerned about it. Let's walk through some of the costs of these three options. If we're looking at pre-built packs, really to be fair, we should be looking at like these rack mount batteries that are 48 volt, uh, maybe 100 amp hour. And you can get those for fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars for a five kilowatt hour pack, and so that comes out to about three hundred dollars a kilowatt hour. And you get a nice BMS, you get a little monitoring screen. They have BMS communication between each other a lot of times. So there's a lot of advantages to having something like that. Don't get me wrong. We're just looking at all the options. Something like the pack that I built today, it does have a BMS that has uh, monitoring capabilities, obviously through Bluetooth, uh, but also through RS-485. And it's not something I've delved into a whole lot, but hopefully we'll be getting to that soon on this channel and how these JBDs can interact with other devices. But this battery came out to more like 200 bucks a kilowatt hour between all the plywood and rods and nuts and bolts and the actual cells and the BMS and the wire. Um, obviously with DIY, there was a lot of tools that I used to build it. So then we get to the recycled. And something like this LG 36 volt pack that Battery Hookup has right now. Really cool pack. And it's already built, it's already put together, it's got the compression. It's 36 volts, which like I was saying, there's there's a lot of 36 volt packs out there and you gotta figure out how to use those, what inverter to use. But you could buy the pack, which they're listed about $100 a kilowatt hour. If you did two of them and you, you pay the, the freight shipping, you get a couple BMSs, um, by the time you've got them built, probably about $150, $160 a kilowatt hour. So yes, less expensive than the DIY lithium iron phosphate that we just put together in this video however it's lithium ion so i would say you're probably going to be like one fourth of the life cycles that you're going to get with lithium iron phosphate so instead of being uh, less costly it actually ends up as more costly over time by probably 3x or 4x depending on how well the batteries age so in my opinion for purely cost-wise, if you're okay with buying the tools, or already have the tools, honestly, the DIY Life Po 4 wins for purely cost. But like we were saying earlier, there's so many things that go into what 
type of battery is good for a certain type of person. So really what I want to do here is just throw out some, some data, some information, and the reasons that I came to my own conclusions on what battery works well for me. As you probably noticed at the, at the end of the sequence there, you saw me putting in the active balancer. And I put it on with alligator clips because I reuse this balancer for every battery that I build. And then after it's built and balanced, the passive balancer in the BMS will keep it in line. And I do that instead of putting all the cells in parallel at the very beginning and charging with the benchtop power supply. I figure it's either buy an active balancer or buy a benchtop power supply. And yes, I'm using a benchtop power supply to charge this, but I could just as easily use a solar charger or inverter charger or an AC charger or whatever. It didn't, doesn't have to be a variable voltage, variable current power supply. Anyway, this is almost charged up. You can see that we're down to 11 watts because this thing will push almost 300 watts um, doing the 5 amps at 58 volts. We are very close to our 3.65 volts per cell. So just perfectly balanced. Well, that was interesting. Interesting. This is the um, version 2.0 of the app. So I wonder if they've got some bugs in there. Um, that, was, that was some interesting data that came across. Anyway, once it hits 3.65, it'll drop to zero watts. And I'm gonna go ahead and run a capacity test. So I've got this 1500 watt Ames inverter, which hasn't failed me yet and the Victron Smart Shunt. We will run my space heater, because you know, resistance heat, that's a good way to run a battery down. It's still gonna take like eight hours, I think, to run the test down, which is actually not as quick as I'd like, because you'd like it to be a 0.2C, which at 11 kilowatt hours would be like 2,000 watts, approximately. I shouldn't be doing math in my head, but yeah, we'll run it down, make sure we can get around 230 amp hours out of it. I swapped over to the older app, but this one doesn't have the cell voltages, which is kind of obnoxious. Uh, it does tell me the total voltage and the average, average voltage, though. So I'm going to call it good, though. We're down to 5.5 watts, charging this up. So I'm going to turn off the bench power supply. So that's, that's done. We're... Our voltage would start dropping if we watched it for very long, down to more of a resting voltage. But we're going to go ahead and start up our inverter here. And there's our heater. And so we're pulling 1.3 kilowatts. So it's only 24 amps. Isn't that so cool when you're on a 48 volt system? pulling a space heater and it's only 24 amps. So we've got our pressure difference. Our voltage delta is only 0 0.02. So that's good. Oh yeah, it's doing it again. I was getting the weird voltages. That's so weird. I've been watching this on my iPhone and it hasn't been doing this. So I think this is an app problem. And this one is a side-loaded Android app, not the one from the App Store. So they probably got some bugs to work out. Because I don't even think, the current graphs aren't even working either, which is unfortunate. But it does show me the cell voltages, which seem to be accurate. And we can see that we are still within 0 0.01, which is to be expected, because when they're in the, uh, the 3.3 range, they should be very close. Um, they will, of course, they will drift once this gets down to the 2.8 volt range these will start drifting and will be more of a difference. Because these are top balance cells and every cell inherently is going to have a little bit of a different capacity. Well, that's cool. It does give us the estimated empty time of nine hours and 24 minutes. Um, an ideal discharge rate would be five hours, but this is a 1500 watt inverter and we're pulling about 1200 watts off of it. So probably shouldn't push that any more than it is. I don't know if I would even have anything that would be able to push it right up to 1500. So. We will do this nine hour discharge rate and hope that we get a little bit more than the 230 amp hours that shows here.
If you too want to flirt with danger and buy lithium iron phosphate cells straight from China, I'll throw the link down in the description for who I've been using.